Krishna. Sometimes your infrastructure and construction projects just need experts to perform precise surveying of the topography, underground and underwater. Here, Michael Center Group's Special Project Division is to help you. We provide an integrated variety of services in construction, exterior, infrastructure, and marine surveying. Our services will cover domains such as surveying and geodetic survey, terrestrial and global LIDAR, area surveying and photogrammetry, underground utility scanning and as dome like ground unit training radar, 3D modeling and simulation, domain information modeling, bath and trick surveying, marine services, geophysical survey and GIS databases migration. We are Hypo Center Group Special Project Division. Visit us for the high definition surveying services and solutions. A big thank you to everyone. A very pleasant good morning to all. My name is Dr. Anirudh, and it's my privilege and pleasure on behalf of Microcenter Group and Bimesh Consulting Singapore to welcome you here today. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to announce that Bimesh Consulting Singapore has agreed to partner with Microcenter to jointly provide solutions and services in BIM adoption BIM implementation and GeoBIM training. Bimesh Consulting Singapore is well known for their strength in the consulting and services in the areas of digitizing construction and infrastructure process. Includes wide ranging BIM consulting and implementation solution for both projects and organization. Bimesh has successfully delivered over 400 projects globally. Our foremost goal is to provide services and solutions to the engineering infrastructure and construction industry and organizations, a wider adoption of digital technology in construction, as well as robotics and prefabrication to enhance productivity and cost control, utilizing building information modeling, BIM, virtual design and construction, VDC, augmented and virtual reality, geographical information system, cloud, mobile, and other latest information technologies. We are honored to have Mr. Ajit Menon, CEO and the Managing Director, Mr. Zeb Mahmood, Shi V. Shong, and Mr. Kenny of Bimesh Consulting Singapore as our speaker today. Mr. Ajit Menon is CEO and Managing Director of Bimesh Consulting Singapore has more than 20 years of experience in strategic consulting and management in the field of design engineering, infocom technology, building information modeling, geospatial and satellite imaging technology, and a champion of interoperability amongst different technologies. Mr. Zeb Mahmood is a senior director, projects and technologies, BMH Consulting, as a senior director of Bimesh Consulting, Jabe oversees strategic projects and technology implementation within large organizations and major projects in the Asia Pacific region. He has established proven process and frameworks using building information modeling, virtual designing, and construction VDC for the successful digital transformation of the organizations. 
He has experience in implementing large airport projects, hospitals, rail, road, and water infrastructure projects from design through construction to the facility and asset management. Shi Wei Xiong and Mr. Kenny is a BIM and VDC consultant and a product manager from BIMESH Consulting. And they had to manage various projects in implementation in BIM and uh, virtual design uh, construction in the Asia Pacific region. Before we get started, I would like to express my sincere appreciation to Micro Center and BIMESH team, Nimisha, Mendy, Iliot, who generously help us make this event come together to become a success. Well, I don't want to take too much of your time and would like to welcome Mr. Ajit Menon, Mr. Jay, Shi V. Shong, and Mr. Kenny to take this event further. Thank you and have a pleasant day ahead. Thank you, Dr. Kale. I think I'm audible. Yeah. Good morning to all. I think uh, welcome to this event. Um, I hope this is uh, early morning to you, 10 o'clock. We are at uh, very far from you. Uh, we are at uh, 3 o'clock now, 3 p.m. in the evening. <clears throat> I hope um, uh, we would like to take you through a uh, couple of presentations from me and from Zeb. I know there are a varied uh, number of people there interest. Uh, you all come from different, different organizations. And uh, most of you know about BIM, some of you know about VDC. Uh, but let me take you through uh, some basics. Some of you uh, already knows, maybe uh, not so interesting, but uh, we will take a step by step approach. So I will take about 10 to 15 minutes to introduce you to what are the technologies available with us. Let me go through the issues with the industry, then go to the technology part. Then I'll hand over to Mr. Zeb to get you the examples of the projects which you have done. OK, so let. Allow me to share my presentation. I hope you can see my presentation. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's me. So my name is Ajit Menon. I am the CEO and managing director of Bimage. Uh, I will introduce Bimage later. You know what we have done. Let's go through some industry issues. <clears throat> so we all know the construction industry influenced the human development, right? <clears throat> it's a, it's not just it's more than a physical spaces. It is in our heart. You know, it, it brings the people together social, cultural, political, recreational and economic endeavors, right? That's so construction forms a very important part in a human development, right? So it's also an important part in the growth of the economy, right? And 10 percentage of the global GDP and employs almost 7 percentage of the global workforce. The global industry construction industry worth almost 10.8 trillion, you know, so it's a huge one of the large industry who supports the GDP of any country. But the major issue of the construction, we still most of the construction industry, whether it's a building, it's it's considered as a last craft industry. What do you mean by craft? We build the building piece by piece. We have not industrialized the construction. That's what it means, right? We still first screen. I just um, have some good picture images talking about the physical spaces and the heart of bringing people together through construction, right? <clears throat> again, again, I was talking about construction plays a powerful role in the growth of the economy. It um, uh, takes about 10 percentage of the global GDP, 7 percentage of the global workforce, and it's worth about 10.8 trillion. Uh, worth of the work, right? And the this is most important thing. Construction industry is the probably the last craft industry. When I make craft industry, we have not industrialized the construction. The constructor, we construct the building piece by piece on the site. OK, so this has also has created a lot of problems because um, uh, 
Uh, it is one of the most informative, information intensive industry. Uh, it exchanged data, it's exchanged talk to the people, etc. But we also create a large data silos of the construction because it is not connected. It's all built as one specific building and we stop there. And uh, this is a McKinsey report. Why these are all happening? Because construction in this is among the least digitized industry. If you can see right from the bottom, the agriculture, above agriculture and hunting is the constructions. That again affect the productivity of the construction industry. We have a lagging construction productivity, which costs the global economy about 1.6 trillion per year. Now we'll go through, I think we have seen the construction industry as a industry itself. What are the issues are happening in the construction industry? How the technology is changing the construction industry? It's not just the technology, we are focusing on the information technology part of the construction. There are many other technology in the construction which is going to help them to increase the productivity. Let's talk about the basic thing. Yeah, if you look at uh, most of you in, uh, in, uh, in the engineering side knows about this one. We started with paper, we, we advanced to 2D CAD, then the 3D, then now BIM and more, right? So uh, we, we will take one by one and see the how the history of building up the information uh, of the design engineering proceed over years. Life before CAD, I think many of us, including me, may not have born at this stage. You know, we use a lot of paper, we draw, a lot of lot many people are there to make, you know, uh, a drawing of a building or a car or anything which we need to design or build. <clears throat> paper to CAD, this is the most important innovation in the history of engineering site. You automated the graphic creation of the drawing from the paper to CAD. That means automating what you are doing in the CAD, in the in the paper to a computer aided design. It's a good productivity gain in construction or not even in construction, when in the manufacturing as well. But the most important thing in that one is undo, right? When Autodesk is one of the premier company who has come up with the CAD software, introduced this undo in, in mid-1980s. It has increased the productivity of whoever is making the drawings, right? A simple change, simple introduction of undo has had a profound effect on the productivity of the engineering industry. Now we have to talk about BIM. You know, we have done with the CAD, what is BIM? BIM is building information model, modeling, management, multiple definitions are there. I just don't want to give a very textual definition. I just want to highlight you if somebody knows about CAD, what is BIM? If you know about CAD, computer aided design, we draw a line and represent it as a wall. We draw some symbol and represent it as a door or a window, right? It's abstract representation of what you have it uh, have physically made. What is BIM? BIM is building information model where there is no abstract. It's all smart objects. A door is a door. A wall is a wall. And you can add other information on the top of it. That means 3D, which is uh, graphic information. You can add time, which is 4D. Cost, which is 5D and facility management information, which is 60. Somewhere it is called 70 also. Don't bother, it's all dimensions of information adding into the BIM model. So the I in BIM is most important thing because that's where the BIM makes difference. It is not 3D, it's more than 3D, right? So if you had information, you can do model analysis, fabrication, product selections, construction estimations, facility management and material specification. So many application can be done if the information is added into your graphic element. So that makes the BIM the most powerful innovation in the construction and infrastructure industry. 
So again, in nutshell, you have an intelligent input. You have a coordinated output. When I say intelligent input, yes, you can create 3D for visualization. You can have 2D drawings. You can have schedules. You can have takeoff. You have you can have clash detections, building analysis. You can have specification all from one model, right? So that saves a lot of time and effort in building up a um, uh, building towards a physical uh, asset. Again, what is there? What are the information we can which we can add? We can add 2D and 3D, which is a geometry schedule time 4D. Material and cost information 5D. Facility information is 6D. You also need to know something called level of development or level of details, LOD we call this. An LOD 100 is pre-designed, schematic design, LOD 200, LOD 300, LOD 350, 400 and 500. And on the bottom you can see what are the level of details have been coming in each and every LOD to increase us as we move into the different stages of construction. So for example, you can see a BIM model here. It's a 3D BIM model of an apartment. This is a 4D BIM schedule which we created for one of the university. So that means you link the time factor into a BIM model. And you can see that when the construction is happening. 5D, which is very important. We attach the cost into the BIM model and you can indicate the progress claim status in the model. So you can use that 5D for cost analysis as well. 6D is facility management, where you can take this BIM model after the construction to facility management and asset management. So what is more than BIM? We call this VDC, Virtual Design and Construction. What is Virtual Design and Construction? We build twice, first virtual, then real. Model what is to be built, rehearse what is to be built, build what is modeled and rehearsed, right? Means you have a digitally built infrastructure before you actually build a physical infrastructure. What is the difference between BIM and VDC? BIM, we already discussed that BIM involves virtual, virtually building an object like a structure or a building with associated information. VDC, on the other hand, uses BIM model to plan the construction process from the beginning to the end. So you have the full information of how the building is going to be performed, how the building is going to be built uh, once we start the construction. So we don't face any issues while constructing it. This is one of the example which we have done with a customer where uh, a virtual uh, uh, design review has been done by the CEO of this building he took the material design information, looked through the building digitally, make critical decisions. Based on his decisions, he could save almost one million dollar. Right. So there is a savings uh, also when we do a virtual evaluation of your physical asset before it is being built. Is it good enough? We have talked about BIM, BDC. You always hear that there's a problem with installations, long punch list, cost overruns, schedule overruns, rework late in the project timeline. There are many issues will come. Some issues are because most of our document driven processes and most of the construction will have a lot of Excel files, drawing files in multiple locations, miscommunications lack of alignment of different document versions, clashes in the field that are not resolved earlier, right? We must have done in BIM, but it has not been taken to the field. Quality issues. 
How to address these issues? We call it a connected BIM. There's something called common data platform, which you can share all that information, coordinate it. A collaboration in the cloud. New technology has come in cloud mobile. Digitized sidewalk, which you can take your uh, BIM data to the site using an iPad or any of the mobile devices, resource management. And you can have a mobile and a cloud based inspection checklist. So these are all done because you are connecting BIM over to the field from the design side to the field. So we call it as a common data environment is needed to support this. What is common data environment? CDE is connecting multiple data and information. You have graphic data, you have non-graphic data, you have uh, documents, all can be connected into a common data environment. You have a streamlined work process, some ISO standard work process. You can say that hey, what is the work in progress, the shared data, the published data, the archived data. Then you are also connecting all the stakeholders. The stakeholders are the client, the project manager, the architects, the subcontractors, main contractor, etc. So all are connected in one system. That's where the common data environment is important. Connecting the data, streamlining the workflows, uh, work processes, and connecting the stakeholders. So the cloud mobile, the new technology has come in to support CDE. It's also called connected. We're connecting the BIM data. Um, so uh, with Boston Consulting you can say that hey, the project life cycle cost savings is about 15 percentage and construction time by 30 percentage. Why it is needed? You can increase the profitability of your construction, the quality of your assets, your customer satisfaction, and you can reduce the business risks because you have the data and information with you. Not only really the data and information is there, it is uh, access from anywhere because you are a cloud based data. You can optimize as well. So that builds come to us so called digital transformation of the construction. A digital transformation of construction include digital design, digital fabrication, digital construction and digital delivery. Again, we are talking about streamlining the work processes, stakeholders, digital data and you know, implementing digital uh, technologies as built to facility management at the end of the day, a better outcome to your user. It builds on BIM, VDC and CDE, which we already discussed. BIM is single source of truth. VDC is built twice, first virtual and then real. CDE is a common data environment in integrating and digitizing the value chain. Once you have all this data together, you can do fantastic work out of it. You can analyze the data. You can get to know what are the outcome. You can implement artificial intelligence, machine learning into your data. And you can get very much insights into your construction processes. We talk about digital transformation till now on the construction side, design and construction side. Beyond construction, that means asset management, facility management, portfolio planning, portfolio management, performance mod monitoring of the building. We introduce a term called digital twin. The BIM world, which is a digital world, we do have 3D data, documents, as built drawings, all these things. When you go into the digital twin, it's a digital equivalent of a physical assets in the virtual world. Means Today we have talked about BIM CD is just to support your construction processes. We know that it is not actually linked with the physical, with machine learning, with IoT elements and all this. We are linking a building with a model so that what you can have a performance analysis from the model to the physical and from the physical world to a digital world. So there are multiple technologies to support that. There's virtual reality, robotics, drone, laser scanning, etc. This is VR. 
a VR based analysis. You can do the clash checks. You can go inside the buildings. Augmented reality, which most of you know that uh, we are augmenting the uh, the, uh, re the real world environment by a computer generated sensory input. You can use an iPad to see what's inside the building. IoT is very key element for digital twin. It supports it. It connects with the multiple elements in the uh, building. So we use a lot of artificial intelligence today to get uh, the improvement in the productivity, safety, quality, and scheduling, including generative design, etc. Blockchain is coming up very much into that one because we have seen that a lot of um, uh, smart uh, self-executing contracts are necessary to support the construction ecosystems so that, you know, we, uh, verify uh, uh, a secure digital ledger for sensor for the owners and operators, etc. It increases the transparency and efficiency in the construction domain. So now we have talked about technology and the data which they have been created by the technology. You see that Internet of Things we talk, compute, uh, cloud computing, artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, etc., where it can give a valuable insight to owners, contractors, and consultants. And what we call as FOP in construction, increase the productivity, practicability of the construction, predictability, and profitability of the construction. But what we are talking about technology data, the new technology, what are all coming in? One thing we have been bear in mind is that an old process does not work with the new tool. You need to change your processes internally. They need to do a gap analysis. You need to make sure that hey, what process you need to be retired, what process you need to be uh, sustained, what process new process need to be created so that you are streamlining your work processes, right? So that's where the image consulting, we work as a partner uh, in digital transformation of construction and infrastructure businesses. Likewise, we do organization consulting. We were employed by the large uh, airport groups and MRT uh, to do an organization by changes of organization consulting, how they want to implement new technology into the construction and infrastructure projects, project-based consulting, uh, specifically for projects, how do you execute a project effectively using the technology, uh, services, uh, training and support, uh, computational side of it, because sometimes you need a lot of automation during the projects where to make it more effective. And then, of course, some application development to create certain products. We work with multiple technology partners. We talk about BIM. If you want to know what are the example, example BIM, of course, we work with Autodesk, uh, Auto, Autodesk Revit, Navy's work, AutoCAD, Civil 3D, uh, um, and VDC uh, Fuso. It's a gaming tool uh, where you can input that building information model and I can you do multiple analysis using that. CDE, Common Data Environment in Autodesk Construction Cloud, whether it is uh, design-based, document-based, or a field-based, which is built, uh, cloud-based collaboration, uh, linking, etc. Uh, laser scan uh, is a very key term in, in capturing the existing building information. Uh, we work with a company called Matterport. Uh, there is an AI-powered 360-degree photo documentation tool for remote inspection, so you can keep on checking your um, uh, construction update on regular basis, weekly basis, monthly basis, and you can compare between two sets of data. Uh, Visual Live is an augmented reality for construction based on HoloLens, so you can put a lens and you can walk to the site, you can see what's happening uh, at the site from the real site. Uh, Unity, again, a gaming platform. We work very closely with the SRI, ArcGIS platform connecting the BIM and GIS, which is very important for many of the infrastructure projects. Uh, there is a course which we work with um, Microcenter, which we are going to uh, offer to you as well. It is called GeoBIM course, which we developed in partnership with ESRI.
For projects and customers, we have been, uh, I was mentioning that we have been a strategic consultant to large airport groups, large metros, urban planning. Uh, we were one of the partner to uh, Smart City uh, uh, in Singapore with the Singapore government. Some of our awards, uh, BCS Building Construction Authority in Singapore, it's a government authority where they give away award for the um, good BIM projects, right? So we've done more than 500 projects. So that ends my presentation. I need to hand over to Mr. Zeb because uh, he has much more interesting things to share. Uh, what Zeb is going to share is uh, practical experience in BIM and BDC, uh, adoption in implementing for airport, metros and hospitals and others. So thank you all. I think if you have any questions, any things which you can type it on your um, uh, box, like we will, we will try to address that. And uh, let me share that. OK, thanks. Thanks, Ajit. I'll take over from here. Yeah. So you can just share my screen. OK, so uh, morning, everyone. So I am Zeb. Uh, I'm a senior director in Vimage Consulting. So for my part of the presentation today, I'll be covering on the use of uh, BIM and how BIM is beneficial to large scale projects. So large scale projects here refers to projects such as uh, urban city planning, airports, metro train projects, and uh, hospital projects as well. So uh, these projects are usually more complex to manage and uh, its compl complexity comes uh, the many challenges that project stakeholders often face in such projects. So I think we will look in general how BIM can support these and also uh, briefly look into the different types of large scale projects and how uh, BIM and VDC has been used in uh, the past project references. Okay, so if we look at some of the benefits as a whole when we implement uh, BIM and VDC on large scale projects, so we are looking at actually incurring fewer errors, lesser rework, greater cost predictability, and all this actually translates to an improved project delivery for all the project stakeholders. So you can see here what are the main uh, use of BIM on such projects. And also uh, on this side here, where the main intent of having BIM is to really connect everyone involved in the project together better and to have a platform for all team members to work on the same sets of drawing and uh, discuss on up to date matters. So instead of incurring the danger of using wrong drawings, which many times we end up doing uh, when there's no proper documentation process. So I think this brings to the next slide, which is on a uh, common data environment, which uh, Ajit touched uh, briefly on as well. So again, we have uh, different parties involved or connected to a project on a central plat platform. And on this platform, we will have uh, we have a single source of truth uh, for access to information. There is also an upkeep of a repository of all files, drawings and information at different uh, phases. And this central platform is a collaboration platform where you can also use to uh, view your files, review your BIM models, and you don't need to actually uh, purchase additional BIM software licenses. Uh, we can use this platform as it becomes a, a web-based uh, platform for you. So you can also better monitor the status uh, of the projects and outstanding real issues uh, in real time. And through the presentation, so through the presentation, you will find some project examples that showcases the benefits of BIM, BDC, and also what are the tools that can be used to achieve these benefits. Okay, so I'll give you a quick example on the great visualization that BIM has, okay, to communicate the intent of a process during construction. So uh, here we have the uh, main contractor or builder who is intending to bring a new technology or machine to the project, okay, which is a stacker. And uh, so they made this video, the builder made this video to convince the client how beneficial this new machine is going to be. Okay, so you have this uh, typical uh, lorry that actually brings the uh, precast structural beam okay, over to the location. So the equipment in red here is the new technology, okay, the new uh, equipment that the builder is trying to propose. So you can see the stacker lifts up the uh, structural beam, the, the precast beam, and it goes into the location where it needs to be put in place. And then with the help of uh, some foreman on ground, so the stacker is able to actually place this precast beam uh, 
uh, as per its desired location. So the contractor was trying to uh, inform client that, you know, with this new technology, you don't need tower cranes. You know, you can use this stacker to actually uh, move on with the project. So how this is being replicated, you can see the video previously and uh, was done in BIM. And this was the actual video that was actually done on site. So this is the stacker in action with the precast beam. And now the precast beam has been put into place. So with this new equipment, the contractor was actually able to uh, do the construction much faster, quicker as well, and also with lesser errors. And the tower crane was, was able to be used for other purposes. Okay, so this was all the main beams being installed by the uh, stacker. So you can see a, a precast or prefabrication process gets uh, quicker. The, the process is, is being done quicker with uh, the use of this new equipment. Okay, so similarly as well, so I'll give you something on a macro level, how different activities can be connected to one another for some uh, level of planning. And you can see how various planning can be done to examine how things can be improved uh, further as well. So this is a virtual 3D neighborhood uh, simulated in BIM BDC. So you can have things like site planning being done with uh, tower crane uh, demarcation areas and also other equipment like excavators and the, the lorries as well, you know, where they are working areas. So you can simulate uh, many kinds of activities you can also have safety warnings okay, on construction sites. So for example, uh, when individuals walk towards a construction site, there'll be some warning. You can have the media line of sight. Okay, when I stand in front of a billboard, okay, what am I seeing? Uh, is the line of sight good? And if there's a construction that comes and I stand further, okay, for example, the viaduct that blocks the billboard now, how is it affecting you? Okay, then you have your solar study, your sun study as well, to actually study shadows. Uh, city level. And you can also put beam models, okay, among uh, non beam models. So, non beam models can be 3D SketchUp files. Uh, you can actually do fly throughs or walk throughs uh, at the basement level or at the ground level. Okay, you can also have an individual to uh, do real life interaction where he waits for the lift, he enters the lift, and he wants to go to his unit of preference. So, the lift door closes. So the leaf goes up into his uh, unit. Okay, so now I think the leaf will reach in a moment. Yeah, okay, so he, he's coming out from the leaf and he can walk uh, into his unit as well. You can plan for emergency simulation as well. So for example, there's a fire and he needs to run. So if you look at the top left hand corner, okay, you can see what is the total distance that he needs to run before he is actually safe. Okay, or he can find a nearby window uh, before the emergency uh, fire engine services can actually uh, call for help on him. And you can also simulate how the fire engine access is into a particular unit or in a particular area as well. Okay, so next we can we'll talk more on uh, BIM for airports, uh, especially on how airport projects have benefited from the use of BIM and VDC. So uh, airport projects as a whole, uh, you can see that it can be really complex uh, with many services involved and also the uh, common demarcations of uh, land site activities and also the uh, air site activities. And I think today there's an increased pressure to ensure that your airport is as beautiful uh, to attract visitors as well. So this was taken from a magazine from Marriott Traveller. So it scrutinizes which is the most Instagram airport in the world. So uh, for those of you who don't know what Instagram is, it's a social media that uh, the users love to take beautiful photos with and upload for sharing with friends and family. So now businesses realize that making its space Instagrammable brings a lot of visitors and attention to it. So this is where they pay a lot of attention to the beauty and the ambience of the place. So I think uh, if, if you ask me who the winner was, the winner was uh, Singapore's Changi Airport. So you can see uh, this is the shopping area that's connected to all the terminals, uh, which most of us know uh, it as Jewel. And you can see how complex the uh, Jewel facade is, how many uh, link bridges it has, 
and also there is a monorail that uh, access into the shopping center and then out of it into the terminals as well. So this is one of the most iconic image you can see inside Jewel with the central waterfall and also uh, the monorail that, uh, that crosses into the shopping center. So how, how Jewel actually uh, comes about doing it is that it's one of the most heavily used BIM VDC project okay, to, to ensure the success planning of uh, all the integrated services, all the integrated uh, items that come together. So you can see here that the monorail entrance was planned for uh, from the start from the start and all issues associated with it uh, is already identified. And then they go on to also study the uh, structural framework and connections as well. So it's very complex and also all the connecting uh, link bridges and the monorail system that, that, that comes uh, later on and also the uh, roof study, okay, for the, the drip on the roof as well. And also lastly, uh, the final integration with all the surrounding structures and also the uh, Kappa access into the area. So all this was planned for with uh, BIM and VDC uh, strategy and processes. So some challenges we, we normally see in airport projects. So uh, we usually see the, the vast use of uh, steel structures. Okay, so uh, BIM helps to actually account for each and every steel member. Okay, you generate, you are able to generate quantities required uh, for, for procurement of the steel members. And also you get a visualization of your structural design and your structural design intent. And you will always see, because you want to make beautiful uh, airports, you will want to, you will want to, you'll see architects who play with complex facade designs. Okay, so this is where you take one step further and you go into computational beam, uh, examples like Dynamo uh, to address this kind of uh, design and also understanding what are the design implications of such complex facade design to other services or other disciplines as well. And you, you also want to have an exact virtual experience before construction. Okay, you can look into a space and see, is this the ambience that you want to have eventually or not? We also see extensive m and &E services as well. Okay, and in BIM, you can actually color code each service type so they can be easily recognized. You get better design of services uh, routing end to end. Uh, you also are able to clash check your m and &E services against one another and also against your structural design, you know, to actually sieve out uh, errors or those uh, design issues from early in the project. So when you when you go into uh, airport project, usually it's a large scale project in nature and you want to be able to visualize the whole site as well, your current site versus your proposed site during a, a project extension. So uh, this gives you better decision making as well. So you can see the whole complete picture and uh, you get a good record of what has been designed and, and built as well. And uh, moving on, just uh, not only the uh, terminal buildings, also the uh, gangway study as well. So you can see that uh, gangway is also being studied as part of a critical item in the uh, airport. And uh, I'll show you some visualization of the gangway in the next slide. And you can see that with BIM, you can even be aware of how the views are from the uh, viewing gallery okay, in the terminals and also study and plan how the different numbers of uh, gangways, different numbers and sizes are required for uh, the different sizes of planes that are to be uh, in that area accordingly as well. Okay, so you can see how immersive it can be, uh, be from looking into the gangway. So on the right side, I have an image of the a gangway, and this was taken from studying the perspectives uh, on the left for the gangway. So uh, you can see BIM can translate perspectives quickly to allow the team to see how things can be fixed. And uh, if you need more space, you need the uh, carpet to be a bit more beautiful with uh, more uh, luscious feel, then I think these are changes that you can do upfront before actually having this constructed or being uh, implemented on site and then a rework or abortive work eventually. So something uh, also critical in, in an airport project will be the baggage handling system or BHS. Okay, so uh, this is normally a critical uh, system that often is overlooked. So what I'm showing you is uh, a project reference from uh, Singapore Changi Airport Terminal 1, uh, where we did a project with them to plot out the whole uh, BHS system as the airport team wants to keep a record and also to prepare for extension and also uh, maintenance in the future. 
So we were able to actually plot out the uh, check-in area and check-in baggage area and the security check areas and uh, where the bags are being screened and also when the baggage proceeds to the designated areas like towards the uh, aircraft or also to, uh, the whole network where in Singapore the uh, baggage handling system moves from terminal to terminal as well. So it's a whole complex uh, integrated network where we're able to digitalize it on a BIM model. So what happens if you if you go with the typical uh, 2D method uh, of, of a baggage handling system? So you can feel that you, you still might be able to get a very uh, complex and very well documented uh, level of information, but uh, somehow when you view this in, uh, in, 2D, in 3D, you can see that most of the times the levels are visualized wrongly, and that's where you get a lot of uh, levels of the baggage handling system on the wrong level, and you tend to incur a lot of uh, rethinking and a lot of uh, discussions during construction. So this is where you have to face with a lot of delays eventually. So you can see that uh, with BIM, okay, with uh, the BHS, uh, the baggage handling system nicely be be being built on BIM, you get a really good view of the whole system and you can plan for other things like space planning or uh, future expansions, knowing what you already have in place currently as well. Okay, so then there's also a scan to BIM. So with most airport projects, uh, being projects on expanding the airport rather than uh, from scratch, uh, it makes good sense to want to know what uh, we currently have in place. So this is where laser scanning, uh, scan to beam can be really useful. So laser, laser scanning here means uh, getting in a laser scanner, which is a tool that is able to capture point cloud data to existing site conditions and provide some reference uh, accurately for beam. So why we want to do this laser scanning exercise is, is to get an accurate constraint uh, of, the, uh, of the existing site. And we want to know what the real challenges and the real uh, risks are involved currently. Okay, so with, with a scan to beam exercise, normally you see an improved design as now the, the designers are designing from uh, understanding the existing conditions uh, of the existing uh, terminals or the existing airport and then uh, making expansions from there. Okay, so uh, we also see that it's a great use when uh, you want to keep a record for uh, future use as well. So this this uh, video is on a flip side of the airport. So this you are seeing from the underside of the ground upwards, and these are all the underground services. So uh, what you're seeing here is that when you click on the services, any of the services, you are able to actually identify what service they are. Okay, they can be uh, documented accordingly. So if I just pause here, so you can see when you click on this uh, particular service here, it says it's an electrical uh, service. So you can add on more information here to actually uh, allow for more uh, record use and record keeping, and you can add color differentiation as well. So similarly, you see they click, they are clicking on the blue one and it's showing it's a water uh, utility. So this is where you can actually uh, keep, keep records of uh, your underground services for future use or future references. Okay, and also for higher level planning, uh, this is a studying of the runway and taxi taxiway concept on the location planning where, so if, for example, if I have an airport here, how is it uh, interfacing with the nearby buildings Okay, and where can the direction of the plane be taking off and where should it be landing? And you can also study uh, nearby areas as well from uh, the plan project on uh, how it will interface with the uh, airport or will it uh, cause disruptions during takeoff or during landing as well. So this was done in uh, Autodesk InfraWorks where we, can, we were able to actually do a very higher level uh, kind of planning for the client to actually understand uh, positioning of uh, the airport and also the runways, taxiways as well for, for the plane use. Okay, so this this is the uh, cut section of uh, terminals in 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 an in a typical uh, airport, and what you can see is that in a, in one loop you can get all the integrated services uh, and see how they interface with one another. So, for example, you get the architectural facade you are able to see the structural frames and elements. You are able to see where the MNE services are 
and you're able to also demarcate where the arrival area is, where the departure hall is, and also not forgetting on the uh, basement side how the baggage handling system works and how all these can be viewed in, in, in one uh, view as a whole. Okay, so uh, now we shift uh, some to something a bit more different. Uh, it's similar but different again. So beam for Metro, where uh, we talk about uh, trains in this instance. So usually we have one of the three types to deal with here. Either the Metro is at the uh, road level, okay, uh, ground level, or it's to be constructed on a viaduct. Normally it's uh, elevated or something more complex would be underground tunnels. So to add to this uh, complexity, usually sometimes the train stations or the metro project uh, gets uh, put together with a station involved as well. So there's a there's a building element to the uh, metro project as well. So the challenges in a, in a train or in a metro project usually is uh, firstly dealing with the train tunnel cross section. So uh, we always get bothered over fixing the train tunnel cross section with the plan out dedicated systems uh, seen here and there is always a pre-planned dedicated area for each system and it gets difficult to manage and ensure that all the services reside only within the allocated space. So uh, I think with BIM, with a 3D visualization, we can easily monitor the systems in their respective spaces and any other systems that crosses into these spaces that they are not supposed to be in, we can uh, immediately identify them, uh, we get a prong and we can Im immediately do correction as well. So this is how we can ensure that you know the design gets uh, is is very consistent from 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 design to construction, where there's no crossing of uh, systems across uh, one another. They should be in their dedicated spaces. So next is alignment. I think alignment is uh, one of the critical items. Uh, important consideration here to actually uh, determine correct alignment set out for the project. And normally misalignment results in huge amount of abortive work and delays. It questions your professionalism as well. So when, when you use BIM, uh, you can see that alignments can be generated uh, directly from BIM, uh, BIM software. It can accurately uh, take into account all constraints, your X, Y, Z constraints. And then also you can do design development. So if it's going to be a viaduct uh, development on top of an alignment, you can actually uh, build on your viaduct accordingly. And further on, you can you can do detailed design uh, on top of what has been uh, your alignment and you can get something uh, really nice, really immersive and really something that you'll be proud to actually show your client. And uh, for those projects where you have to take care of the track and the station, then the area where the track meets the station will be the critical area to take care of and also to coordinate well. Uh, again, this is where the intense coordination is required and this level of coordination can be easily done with uh, BIM and VDC, where we allow for uh, design reviews okay, and also uh, identifying design issues. So you can see this example here of the uh, a project in Singapore, an upcoming train station in uh, Singapore, where uh, the, the station and, and track is being done by both the builder. So they have to take care of a vertical construction, uh, meeting a horizontal construction as well. So the interfacing uh, was really critical where they cannot afford any mistakes. But you can see with, with a visualization like this, uh, this was taken from one of the screenshots of walking through the model. Uh, you can immediately point out where the issues are, where uh, the pain points are going to be eventually. And the, the ability to construct this without any mistake is really high. Okay, so uh, on the maintenance side as well, so where has uh, this been used where in, in the metro projects. So you can see I have a testing center here. It's almost like a depot where uh, trains are being uh, maintained and tested out. I have a lorry here who actually brings or transport the train uh, into the center. So you can see, you can study how many turns does the lorry need to make to actually have a good uh, parking into the uh, designated area to offload the train. Okay, and finally, the train gets uh, offloaded. It gets combined and it moves across the track, uh, ready to move into this uh, testing center. So we can also see uh, how smooth the, the train is uh, transiting before it, it enters into this uh, testing center. 
So now the train reverse and we can see the space as well, whether it's sufficient to enter, okay, whether, whether the band is good and so on. Okay, and similarly, what we can also plan for is when the train exits out, okay, and it goes out back into the uh, track, okay, how is it negotiating uh, parts of the curve? Okay, so this is again uh, your rail track on your road level or ground level, and then it negotiates the bend, and slowly you will see it uh, uh, ascending, okay, into a viaduct structure. And you can see here that uh, even the viaduct is, uh, they are piers on water. And you can see this has been planned out as well. So you see, these are some of the simulations that we were able to do, able to capture for the client, you know, before things are being built on site. So they can know where the areas to uh, point out eventually if there's any issues. Okay, so I'll move on. Yeah, just off the uh, sound. So this uh, next project will be more for uh, constructing a tunnel uh, metro project uh, underground. So it will be uh, covering, you'll be cutting through uh, a, a town. So this town is already congested enough. You can see the paths of the tunnel. It, it will go under uh, quite a sizable number of buildings. So a few things here that uh, we pre-planned for the client, for example, uh, traffic planning. Okay, how uh, certain parts of the traffic will be closed. Okay, so for example, if you see where uh, my mouse is, this is the first road uh, that gets uh, closed eventually. So you can see now the road is being closed and how traffic is diverted uh, from, from one path to another. And also if there's any issues uh, during the diversion of traffic as well. So again, it's a metro project, but uh, with metro project, you not only take care of constructing the metro, there are other implications to it as well, you know, as you as you uh, go about doing the construction. So uh, if you follow through the uh, the simulation, you can see that uh, traffic diversion gets uh, moved uh, along street A towards the left. And uh, the diversion is really just to see how well traffic can still go on while construction is going on in, in that area. So if I just uh, fast forward a little bit to, uh, yeah, to the construction, but so we were able to simulate the hoarding area, okay, the areas that we, we will need to work on. And we can also put out the uh, superstructure construction, okay, of, of the station and also plan out uh, how intense the construction will be at uh, existing site, de de demolishing the existing uh, site area and also rebuilding new uh, parts to interface with the uh, existing portion. Okay, so I'll just fast forward. We can also simulate uh, a construction. We can simulate uh, the uh, excavation downwards, and this is with using uh, one of the biggest tunnel boring machine, the TBM machine uh, in Singapore. So it's 12 meters in diameter to actually uh, cut the uh, tunnel openings. So we, we were able to simulate from the launching shaft how the machine uh, gets fixed and eventually does the uh, cutting of the tunnel uh, and how the whole formation of the soil, you know, uh, is being studied from uh, testing. Okay, and this is the whole uh, TBM machine and we were able to showcase uh, during the uh, boring of, of the tunnel. So how the, the precast uh, center points were, were being put and also the precast Panels as well on the edge of the tunnels. So all these were able to be simulated. Okay, so this was this is the dividing wall. So we are able to also showcase the dividing wall, how it gets inserted. Okay, and this will be the exit, okay, the exit part of retrieving the, the diamond cutter and retrieving the TBM machine. So you can see as a whole, we were able to show showcase how construction, the metro station will be below and in relations to the whole neighborhood uh, around it as well. And what are the implications and uh, what are the constraints of the risk? 
Okay, so the next one will be uh, something more focused into just construction and also uh, the timeline of construction as it uh, moves on and how do you track uh, construction as it goes on. So you can see there's a timeline here of a very brief uh, set of activities and how when certain activities happen, the timeline uh, shift accordingly as well. Okay, so you can see uh, king posts and all the struttings were being uh, put in place and how the casting is being done and then uh, eventually the backfield to ground level and so on. So I'll just do a fast forward. Okay, we, so we are able to also cut at certain sections to, to do a, a further look through into the, uh, the construction and also simulate how uh, the entrances level into the metro station. It's an underground metro, so you have uh, escalators going downward. And finally, uh, a fly through uh, of the whole metro station. So this is where we actually uh, move into the metro, metro station. So this was the escalator that was going downward from the ground level. Okay, so we're able to actually visualize. This is from uh, ground level. Okay, and for any uh, amenities nearby as well, so like pedestrian overhead bridges, uh, any bus stops, any connections. So you are able to actually get all these uh, connected or integrated facility together as one as you do the project. Okay, so I think uh, that was so much for a uh, beam for metro project. So I think we will move we'll move to beam for hospitals now. So hospitals, uh, I think we know they are multidisciplinary in, in nature. So you work with uh, many disciplines, you work with uh, many stakeholders as well. Uh, many people in, involved in the project, you have uh, the client to please, please and also all your uh, subcontractors who come in with different expertise, uh, specialists and so on. So we take this reference from uh, Amokyo Hospital, one of the projects that we did in uh, Singapore as well. And you can see how extensive the uh, different disciplines are in, in the project and uh, how they, they actually come together to make this uh, project a success. So firstly, uh, for hospitals, there will be a lot of coordination. I think we are, we are talking about uh, vertical construction now and there's very limited vertical spaces uh, at all times as we go from level to level. So uh, as much as possible, you can see that uh, the, the team discusses a lot in interfacing on a touchscreen TV. So all these discussions were being done in a lightweight uh, BIM model. So I think you know that as BIM becomes very detailed, uh, the BIM model gets really heavy. So if we work on a BIM, on a lightweight BIM model, like directly from a CDE, like BIM 360 docs, then uh, the team gets more excited and there's more initiative to want to constantly use the model to, to uh, review and to also uh, check for design issues as well. Okay, and then all reviewing, all measuring of the models are being done from uh, the CDE itself, the Common Data Environment, and they were also able to create views, okay, to actually save this view for future use or for any targeted agenda prior to any of their meetings. And uh, so they, they also made use of uh, 4D simulations. So this was uh, to do project tracking. OK, so uh, they have a baseline program. And what was the actual progress on uh, the data date uh, that they want to check for? So you can see uh, they, they were able to see on the plan. They, they were on the plan date. They were supposed to finish 20, almost 28 percent of the project. But in actual, they are just about 25 percent. So you can also do a variance check on how many percent off are they. And uh, you can see where are the items that they are behind schedule. Okay, and if any uh, ahead of schedule and what are the finished items as well. And you can also add in more uh, information to see uh, where formwork is at the moment, uh, which are the areas where concrete casting has, has been done, uh, which are the areas where concrete is finished, okay, and where the reinforcement uh, positionings are at the moment as well. So I think you can add on uh, more data if, if it serves your, your, your purpose of uh, monitoring the project better. So uh, hospital being uh, a very difficult project to take care of many specialists. So they also did uh, simulations of uh, the site work or the site activity. Okay, and uh, in this site activity, they, they, take, they took care of the uh, tower crane positioning and how the shift, the movement of the tower crane will be as uh, the project develops. 
and also on the uh, ME and Aki installation as well. So they were taking care of uh, how the coordination, the uh, the extent of installation should not uh, clash between different specialists as they come on site and which are the priority areas for them to install uh, first as well. So uh, the, the, the contractor was able to uh, document some of his uh, achievements or his his KPIs, his key performance indicators in the project uh, that, that he has done. For a prior, he, he was checking actually a previous project of similar size, and that was like a non-BIM, non-VDC project. And you can see some of the uh, time, some time savings that he had. For example, to do uh, site inspections was uh, improved by 58%. Okay, And then even his own consultants, for them to respond to a, a, a question or an RFI was uh, more than 62%, and they, they had real-time coordination, so uh, that improved about 70%, and even the quantity surveyor for the for the QS to actually calculate any variation or the cost, uh, they can do it very fast, and that was an improvement of uh, 43%. Okay, so I think uh, this, all this uh, is actually good where uh, organization takes care of uh, what are the benefits they reap or they gain from uh, implementing BIM or implementing VDC from project to project so that they can monitor are there any issues you know or is BIM not helping me if, if it's if BIM is not helping where are the areas that I need to improve on or are there any lapses in my processes that I need to uh, further fine-tune as well okay so I think uh, I'm on my last slide here so I think there's a it's a QR code uh, generated from BIM as well so I think they, they are all alive you, you might want to just take out your phone and you might just want to uh, scan the QR code and uh, you know look, look for yourself from the phone to see how uh, BIM can actually simulate uh, certain areas. This, so this was from the hospital. So I took a floor plan and I just generated some uh, virtual BIM uh, on, on these areas. So you, you might want to just try and, and, and see for yourself, you know, if, if this is something you like or you know if, they, if you have any comments as well okay so I, I think other than that i'm also done I'm, I'm done with the presentation as well thanks okay so i i have a comment here that says uh, it's a very nice interactive feature so i think uh, for those of you who haven't scanned this, maybe you can try, you know, you can see uh, how interactive it is. And this can easily be done. I can assure you that as well. Uh, Zeb, there was a question earlier by Wai. Uh, it's asking whether uh, uh, all these things which you have shown uh, can be taken to the operating operation of the building. Oh, okay. Yes. So, uh, most of the things that we have shown actually uh, uh, gets integrated into the uh, backend system as well. So, it, backend system, I mean the uh, operations or the facilities management uh, systems. So, yes, you can you can definitely uh, bring this and use it downstream as well. Okay, I think there's a question on it's a web standalone model. Okay, so uh, what what was being done here is that uh, we we did some rendered uh, process of of these uh, areas that you are seeing, and uh, we we put in the uh, rendered uh, immersiveness, the three D uh, into a link. So it, it it's web based at the moment, but uh, if you want to retrieve the whole model, then it's not web based. Okay, so just some of these areas that you're seeing, yes. Uh, it's put on the web so that you can scan and with a link you can actually retrieve it. Okay, so. Okay, so uh, hi everyone. Hi, this is, hi, hi. There's an echo here. 
Um, so I think there were a few more um, uh, questions. So um, Zeb, I think you've addressed most of them here. Um, so people can start typing in still, but otherwise I think we can um, go into some some next steps. So let me quickly. Um, OK, I can't present. So uh, basically there was a couple of very good points that were raised up by uh, obviously Ajit as well as with um, with Zeb. And um, I believe that right now when I'm looking at the chat, a lot of questions coming up. Some are more generic and general around uh, VDC, around BIM. Some will be a lot more specific. Um, how do I implement it in my organization? How does it mean for me? So uh, from here, my recommendation would be the next steps. Everyone uh, get in contact with the micro center team and uh, based on our experience we will actually um, have one-on-one -on -one sessions with all of you you can bring in your management you can bring in your team members and let's have an open discussion that is specific to your questions your concerns um, and uh, we can address everything from there um, so I think uh, Dr. Kale if you're here um, everyone has obviously a way to reach out to to the micro center team um, I think we can do it like that yeah uh, I had a quick slide, but I can't present it. So I think, oh, OK, now it's working. Um, you can ask Seb to take out his presentation. And no, can... it was just saying that I'm not a presenter. So it was. Just... <laughs> so that was. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Yeah. So this was basically just, you know, a quick slide that says, you know, um, this is this is what's happening now. I'm seeing a lot of interaction, which is great. Depending on time, I think we can take a few more questions if people want to type it into the, the chat box. But otherwise, the best way would be um, we arrange a session dedicated for your teams. Uh, obviously, send us questions in advance if you like. Otherwise, one thing that I think would be quite relevant to them is people will have a lot more questions about your specific case studies and your examples, right? So we can actually give them in that individual session more details on how some of those projects were run and how some of those success stories can be implemented for them. OK. So yeah, got Dr. Kale, anything? Otherwise, I think um, we can close off. Thank you, everyone. Ah, OK, so there were a few more questions. Um, web standalone commissioned contracts. Uh, yeah, Ajit, you want to take that question? Uh, so this is a commission contract. Uh, Jesus, can you just elaborate on what you okay. mean by commission contract? The projects, I think he's asking about the projects, right? You can unmute yourself if you want to. Uh, are you part of the consulting firm or you are commissioned by the consulting firm on a particular project? Oh, OK, you are asking whether we are the part of the projects or we are being the consultant to the project, is it? Yes. OK, OK, so most of the things, you know, uh, sometimes uh, we are the part of the project, sometimes we are uh, uh, we are the consultant to the projects to support them uh, for their uh, BIM activity as a consultant. You know, uh, uh, most of you know that like most of the customer probably may not have that capability to do end to end uh, BIM projects or VDC or CDE. So we come as a technology consultant, we come as a process consultant. Uh, we will help them that one. Yeah, that's what we do. The uh, the point of the uh, question is, uh, for example, uh, we the client will ask the uh, consultant to integrate BIM on their consultancy, and if they don't have the capability, they will uh, commission you to do so. Or correct, yeah, how does it right. works? So sometimes they have the capability, but still they, you know, some of the things the technology is very much evolving. You know, like what uh, Zeb has demonstrated, certain things like need a high end technical capability to do that one, so they commission us. Uh, depends upon their capabilities. Some but have I think basic on the, mid, uh, on the Middle East, we are only at the uh, 3D, 3D level, no? Correct, we don't have the 4D, we don't have the 5D. 
We don't even have the simulated modeling. Correct. Yeah. So what we do is we will take on, we will. So there are two parts. One is yes. we can yes. do that one for you or we will help you to do it. You know, we will transfer the knowledge to the people there, right? So we will also take up and do it for you. There are two ways. All right. Yeah. OK, so uh, for, for example, in the hospital, what is the price range that uh, uh, you're looking at? We can discuss that, you know, it depends upon, you know, because we are in a two different geography, right? So uh, we can discuss that part. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you. Yeah, so I yeah. think the, the main point here would be these type of questions would uh, would be keep would be coming up. Uh, so for everyone that is on the call just now, there's a lot of information being shared. Uh, questions I think we yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think there was an maybe uh, Ajit, if everyone is okay, there's another couple of questions we can probably answer a few live and then end the call then. Yeah. Yeah, so let me just see. May, there was a question. Um, yes, uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, it was uh, informative. My question is regarding the uh, difference between them and VDC. If you could elaborate more on that. OK, so I think if you look at uh, BIM and VDC, I mean, I put it in my slide very generally, you know, uh, what is BIM and what is VDC, right? So uh, VD, BIM is uh, what we call as a, uh, uh, we create a BIM model, we associate an information into it, okay? That's BIM, you know, you create an information rich model, right? And sometimes we will do some 4D part of it, sometimes we do 5D, uh, but whatever you have seen from uh, Zeb's presentation, you see the trucks going in and we are doing the installations and all these things. That's basically we are simulating it. We are just making sure that what, how do the construction process work? So we are taking the BIM model to the next level to plan the construction process from the beginning to end. That involves VDC. VDC also involves a concurrent uh, communication and discussion with the team. So again, in a nutshell, it's more than BIM, building information modeling. We do a lot of uh, process integration into the BIM. Okay. Um, I do understand that with BIM um, and maybe also with modeling, we can um, like auto check the uh, the building and its alignment with the regulations, but what with the traffic traffic and, uh, assessment, traffic impact assessment? Is it possible to do that using the same, let's say, similar products? What is the sorry? You've shown us a previous like video on a truck moving within the road. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. That is just 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 to assess like if the truck can pass through that road, but can you um, can you like uh, simulate the impact of uh, the building on the traffic within that area? The traffic analysis, you mean? Yes, traffic analysis. Yeah, if you... that building of, of building that building within that area, can you assess that as well? So if the information is being tracked and uh, the right tools, you know, see the thing is BIM is all about different tools, technology, processes, yeah. and what we need to do, right? So there is a traffic analysis tool is there, which you can use it and do the analysis as well. Okay, the load analysis, if you want to do, you can do the analysis. So if the BIM model is there or the nearby BIM information is available, yes, probably uh, most of the things which you can do, but the information need to be input into the data, into that uh, BIM model or the uh, facility model, you know, whatever you have it. I see, thank you very much. Okay, I think there was one more question and I think we can address that. Um, is that Syed? Somebody raised their hand. Hmm. 
okay maybe maybe by accident <laughs> all right um so i think uh, most of the questions in the chat we have addressed there are people asking about um the the presentation we'll send a copy of the presentation as well um and uh, dr kale and team are obviously available so uh like we suggested uh reach out to them and uh i think the best value would be if we have a one-on-one -on -one discussion uh with you guys bring in your right team uh and then we can address all the questions that are actually very specific for yourself um, and can give you some um, very specific examples of um, other projects that are done within your industry. Okay, great. I think Dr. Kale, you, your side is on mute. Do you want to unmute? You're saying something? <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you, Naina. So thank like a final word from us, thank you very much for the team we met, especially to Mr. Ajit and you know, Mr. Zair for just a fantastic presentation and application area of BIM and BDC and how it can be applied specifically when we talk about our region. So that is something that was very interesting about this presentation. And as we have seen from the chats that people are asking, you know, the kind of question that is operational and in terms of application in their specific areas. So as Nana discussed, definitely we will try to reach out to them separately. We will have a specific discussion and we will take it forward. So on the behalf of Microcenter Group, we want to say thank you very, very much. And we will be coming again for you know a specific uh, presentations and webinars to understand more and to see that how we can apply technology as far as digital <coughs> information is concerned. So again, thank you very, very much. Have a great day and take care. Thanks a lot to all of you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.